I'm Marion Calder, Public Education Specialist with the Horry County Museum. And today we're going to talk to you a little bit about our freshwater fish. So behind me we have our freshwater aquarium that was done by the guys from the Animal Planet show Tanked. And so we're really excited to be able to show the different kinds of wildlife that live in our local rivers and streams. A lot of aquariums that we see today are saltwater aquariums, and that's a completely different environment. Many of the fish that live in the ocean aren't able to live in rivers, and vice versa. A few can live in both, and we call those diatribus species. Eels, striped bass, and shad are a few examples of each, and they can live in both fresh and saltwater environments. So we don't often get to see the types of fish that swim around in our rivers. A lot of that has to do with the color of our rivers. They're darker because of the tannic acids that come in from the hardwood trees. So we don't always get to see the wildlife that lives inside of them. So it was really important to us that we showed the different animals that live in things like our Waccamaw River and our local lakes around here. So we're gonna talk about some of the fish that are in this aquarium. One of the guys you might see swimming around occasionally is this big blue catfish. Blue catfish are really common to this area. They can get anywhere from three to 40 pounds and can range in size from 20 to 45 inches and can live up to 34 years. There's one right there. So that's our blue catfish. We actually have three of them that live in our aquarium. So these guys like slow moving water. Um, and they will eat a variety of foods. They'll usually be bottom feeders and go along the bottom of the, the water to find whatever they can to eat. If you also look around the bottom of the aquarium, and it's kind of hard to see on the video, but if you come in and visit, you'll see um, things like Native American tools and pottery, even up to modern glass bottles. And we did that on purpose. We wanted to show how objects have made their way into our waterways for a long time. Sometimes on purpose, sometimes on accident. And it's important to remember that our earliest communities and villages were often set up near a body of water. Water wasn't only a food source, but it was also a common way for people to travel. Sometimes it was actually easier to travel and trade along waterways than it was to go through a swampy area or even really thick forests. And if you're ever here, come look closely at the bottom and you'll even see some fossilized shark's teeth. Because at one time, all of Horry County was actually covered by the ocean. So we can find fossilized remains of marine animals in our riverbeds, even as far inland as Florence County. Another fish that we have in our aquarium is the long nose gar. So he gets his name because of that really long jaw or mouth that he's got. A lot of people confuse the long nose gar with the alligator gar, which actually lives in different parts of our country. The long nose gar can get anywhere from two and a half to three feet long in our area. And he's actually got really tiny, tiny little teeth inside of that mouth. And so they can actually get pretty sharp. But because they have that really long mouth, they can be pretty difficult for fishermen. Usually if you're trying to fish, the gar might be the animal or the fish that comes in and steals your bait or gets tangled up in your lines. So they can be kind of a nuisance if you're a fisherman. The gar will usually live anywhere between 17 and 20 years. But a fun fact about that jaw is that jaw is actually twice as long as the rest of their head. Another neat thing about the long nose gar is they can actually use their swim bladder like a lung. So if they're in really poor quality water, that swim bladder can substitute as a lung to help them breathe in that water. Another freshwater fish that we have in this aquarium is the bass. There are lots of different varieties of bass that can be found in South Carolina. There's the striped bass, which can actually live in both saltwater and freshwater. And there's the spotted bass and largemouth bass. One of the easier ways we can tell a difference with the spotted bass versus the largemouth is by how far back the mouth goes. A largemouth bass actually has its mouth go beyond its eye. So, they can eat a variety of prey, including other smaller fish. They also like slow moving or sluggish water and can be found all over the state. Bass can range in size from, any, from anywhere from one to three pounds, although it's not uncommon to find them as big as eight pounds. On average, they live about 23 years. And another smaller fish that you'll see in our aquarium are different varieties of sunfish. Sunfish include fish like the red-breasted sunfish or the bluegill or brim. 
We find these throughout our areas too, and besides the bass, they're one of the most common sporting fishes found in South Carolina. Depending on their size, they'll eat a variety of prey, whether it's other fish, insects, anything they can find. On average, they live about eight to 10 years and are usually less than a pound in weight. Now you'll notice we actually have two separate aquariums and that's on purpose because some fish are predatory fish like bass and other fish would be prey. So of course predators hunt prey and we don't want the predatory fish eating the smaller fish. So we actually keep them separated, especially until the smaller fish can get some more size on them. We hope you've enjoyed getting to know some of the fish of the Horry County Museum. Here at the Horry County Museum, we talk about the Native American history, cultural history, and natural history of Horry County, South Carolina. We have four changing galleries on our first floor where you can see things like photographs, textiles, or new exhibits like the one on the Waccamaw Indian people. That'll be up through January of 2022. Upstairs, we have our permanent galleries, and you can see things like our military history, more Native American history, Grand Strand, and our agricultural and industry history. If you want to learn more about what life was like for the family farm and our agricultural history, we also have the L.W. Paul Living History Farm at 2279 Harris Shortcut Road. Both of these sites are free and we're open year round, Tuesday through Saturday. The museum's open 9 to 5 and the farm is open 9 to 4. All of our programs are free and feel free to check out our website at www.orycountymuseum.org to find out more about what's going on at the museum and the farm.